Calm down. Calm down. It's great to be here. It's fantastic. I can see you're a great audience. It's great to have an audience. <laughs> Remember a few years ago, I couldn't get an audience and it was tough. Very tough. Remember, that was the time when my mum and dad had never seen me do comedy before. And they were sus on me, because I'd lived at home for 20 years and I hadn't made them laugh once. <laughs> they wanted to come to one night of a season I was doing and some nights there was no one there. And they wouldn't tell me what night they were going to come. So I had no chance to stack the audience on that night. Make it look like I was kicking ass. <laughs> I walked on stage this night, there's only two people there. Mum and Dad, just staring at me. I tried to keep my professionalism. I said, is anyone here from overseas? <laughs> they said, you know exactly where we're friggin' from. <laughs> they gave me a lot of attitude, but I get attitude every now and again. I got in a cab recently, I was doing a gig, got in a cab and the guy gave me attitude. I got in his cab and he said, what are you doing? I said, I'm doing a stand-up gig. He said, oh yeah, where? I said, this theatre. He said, it's a big theatre. You good enough to fill it? I said, mate, there's five seats in this cab. You only filled friggin' two of them, haven't you? <laughs> Having a bad day, are you, dickhead? <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. I wish I had said that anyway. <laughs> I thought of that three weeks later. <laughs> but good on me. I've got a lot of attitude in cabs. I was in a cab, another cab recently, and the guy was talking on a mobile phone, which is not good in itself, but it was in another language. I had no idea what he was saying. He could have been saying, ooh, I've got a cute one here. <laughs> I like to think of myself as cute now. I never did. Oh, for a long time, I didn't think I was cute. At school, I didn't feel cute. I got no action at school whatsoever. It's probably pretty handy. I went to an all boys school. <laughs> Would have been nice to have been asked, though. <laughs> Uni was tough, too. That university was a tough, long six weeks, I can tell you. I really couldn't focus. I used to go into the big lecture theatres and I'd sit around, I'd look around, I'd go, mmm. I'd root her, I'd root her, I'd root <laughs> And I, I don't know, thank you, no, I think that's fine. I didn't root anyone, I tell you. It's a lot of theory, but no practice going on. It's tough, my parents were sus on me, but for that too, they rang, mum rang me up once and said, Dave, it's okay if you're gay. I said, Mum, I'm not gay. She said, I never see you with girls. I said, I do see girls. She said, you never bring them down home. I said, Mum, it's a three hour drive down there. These girls want 200 bucks an hour, you know. It's, <laughs> it's far too much for me. Well, I didn't have a girlfriend for a long time, or right? I was not until I was 25 till I got my first girlfriend, you know. So I was walking around this earth for 25 years and, you know, without a girlfriend, without, you know, without realising all the things that was wrong with me. Really, you don't realise how unlovable you are till you find someone who loves you, really, do you? <laughs> there was a lot of things I was doing wrong in life and I didn't realise. Like eating cereal, I was eating that too, far too loudly. <laughs> when you're eating Special K in the kitchen and you're waking someone up from the bedroom, you've got an issue. <laughs> Other things I was doing wrong, the margarine container, when I was digging my knife in there, I was going down too deep. <laughs> I should have kept the dippings more shallow so as to not upset the look of the container. I didn't know that. I thought if I kept the jam out of there, I was doing a good job. The non-stick wok, I should not have cleaned that with a scourer. And when I did, I should not have lied about it. We used to break up quite a bit. It would be inconvenient, all the breakups, because I would always be, always, she'd always order me out of the house. She'd say, that's it, it's all over. Get out, I never want to see you again. I'd start walking out, she'd go, yeah, that'll be right. Just walk out. <laughs> Eventually we did break up. She's a beautiful girl and she's moved on with her life and I appreciate that. She rang me up recently, she, she said, I found someone else. I said, that's good. She said, he makes me laugh. <laughs> I said, I'm like a chef, I don't cook at home, all right? <laughs> Guys, you've been a great crowd. Thanks for having me, cheers. See you next time.